uh, congratulate you for the great job that you do uh, representing me as uh, my district representative in Stanton and serving the people here of uh, Rockbridge County, Lexington, and Buena Vista, as well as Stanton, Augusta, and Waynesboro, and Highland, and Bath. Uh, she does a great job helping people who have problems with the federal government. I know none of you ever have problems with the federal government, but what she does is help get answers to people's questions and cut through red tape. And there's always red tape with government, but since the Obama administration has gone in, she's had to learn how to cut that red tape lengthwise. <laughs> I want to congratulate uh, Ben and Elizabeth. That's uh, really exciting news. And uh, Ben does such an outstanding job representing you uh, in Richmond and carrying your conservative values there. We have a great opportunity this year to help our great governor, Bob McDonald, on his mission uh, to have effective government and to create jobs. And we all know that those jobs are created in the private sector. And our government's, governor has done a great job of that. But he stymied many times by Virginia Senate that uh, we can change. And in fact, right here in this congressional district, we can make that change. If we can elect T.J. Aldis to the Virginia Senate, that's one of the two seats we need to get a tie in the Senate. We have a second opportunity down in the Roanoke, Montgomery County area with Dave Nutter, a great member of the House of Delegates who serves with Ben, running for the Senate against an incumbent Democrat. We have a third opportunity in the new open seat that includes part of the 6th District, including the Lynchburg area. And uh, we have a fourth opportunity in re-electing uh, Senator Ralph Smith, who was put into another district with another Republican, Steve Newman, and he very uh, adeptly moved over to the uh, adjoining Senate District, and if we hold on to that one as well, right here in the 6th District, we can make the difference to control the Virginia Senate and make a big, big difference here in the state. When we do that, that will lay the groundwork for what's going to happen next year. And that's an opportunity not only to win control of the Virginia Senate, I mean the U.S. Senate, but also to elect a new conservative Republican President of the United States. I want to uh, congratulate also Wendell Walker, our new 6th District Republican Chairman, uh, who won uh, a very close and, and hard-fought uh, race. Uh, and he and his uh, opponent uh, have already joined together. We'll have a great Chairman and Vice Chairman of the 6th District Committee as we work on these races all across the 6th District. The Senate races are critically important. We are doing very, very well in the House races, as Ben noted, not having an opponent. That's true all across the 6th District. Many of our candidates don't have opponents. And then, finally, we need to elect our folks to local elective office. This is a great ticket here in Rockbridge County, Lexington, and Buena Vista. Members of the Board of Supervisors and the Constitutional Office who will carry those conservative values uh, to work with them every day right here uh, where you see them at work every day is so vitally, vitally important. And finally, let me say that uh, I am delighted to be here with my good friends Mark Obenchain and Rob Bell. Uh, they have uh, long and distinguished records of conservative representation of their parts of the 6th Congressional District. Rob uh, has just gotten a portion of, uh, of Rockingham County uh, added to his district, so uh, he is now a member of uh, a very large and uh, uh, very conservative and very uh, well-fought team of representatives in the House of Delegates and the Senate representing us. Now, this Labor Day, the uh, President of the United States is going to Detroit, not to stand in front of the Ford Motor Company and celebrate uh, uh, how that company weathered uh, a difficult financial storm, and uh, did so without government bailouts. But rather, to claim that uh, this is uh, a wonderful automobile industry saved by government bailouts. Exactly the opposite is the case. Ford Motor Company did it right. They achieved uh, uh, efficiencies in their production, they improved the quality of their product, uh, and they sold it uh, right through that uh, difficult time period without government handouts. Other companies did not do that. 
The difference, I think, is that those companies still have not made the efficiencies that are necessary to assure their long-term survival. They have effectively been uh, adapted to the way this government would like many sectors of our economy to work. The President isn't going to South Carolina today to stand by the new and not yet operating Boeing plant that his administration's appointees to the National Labor Relations Board would like to shut down before it even gets started, claiming that somehow it's a violation of our labor laws for a company to want to expand into a right-to-work state, like Virginia and 21 other states are right-to-work states. It is vitally important that we recognize that this president doesn't have a clue Right. in understanding where jobs come from and why we really celebrate the American worker on Labor Day because of their individual initiative and productivity within the free enterprise system. <laughs> on Thursday, the President will come to the Capitol and present uh, his jobs plan. For the most part, I think it will be more of what he has offered us for the last two and a half years. Uh, he will offer uh, up the possibility that the government should spend more money. He'll try to pick things to spend it on that may have greater appeal, for example, to the business community, but it still doesn't get the point that what we really need is to focus on the free enterprise system, on where the real lasting jobs that create real economic growth are created and that is in the private sector with risk takers who will bring together capital, great ideas, and great workers and put them to work creating not only new jobs but also new opportunities for our country as we compete around the world. That is what our agenda is about in Washington, keeping taxes low and tackling the unbelievable onslaught of new government regulations and programs being brought by this administration. There are not, you know, each week we're going to bring up a government regulation that has been estimated will cost the economy more than a billion dollars. And you know, there aren't even enough weeks uh, in the rest of the year to accomplish that. To say nothing of not enough days in the year to accomplish the task of trying to address each of the new regulations that cost in the tens or hundreds of millions of dollars each per year. Hundreds of new proposed regulations that sap the lifeblood out of our economy. And every sector of our economy, from agriculture to banking to manufacturing to uh, uh, a whole host of other areas where we see the opportunity to create jobs, not by having the government step in and bail them out or over-regulate them, but by doing just the opposite by giving them the opportunity to do what needs to be done without the overburden of the federal government. That, I think, is what this election this year in Virginia is about, because Virginia is a state that understands that, and it is far more reflective of our state government than it is of our federal government. And it is what the election will be about next year as well, because as much as we'd like to go in and overturn all of the things that need to be overturned, from Obamacare, to regulations by the Environmental Protection Agency, to a whole host of other areas, we will fight it out day by day on the ground. And we'll make some progress in terms of cutting government spending, <clears throat> in terms of restraining some of these uh, regulations, in terms of embarrassing the president into halting some of those regulations. But we will not get the job done until we win control of the United States Senate. And most importantly, most importantly, until we win the election for president next year. So, so as we do that, we're going to make clear differences in our agenda with the presidents. We're going to spell out what we believe is the way to grow our economy. Not to grow government, but to rein in government like with a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. For the first time in 15 years, we'll have the opportunity to vote on that in both the House and the Senate. And if either the House or the Senate gets the 290 votes in the House or 67 votes in the Senate to pass it, 
the other body will have to vote on the identical measure. If they do, and we send it to the states, three quarters of them will have to ratify it. That is a very steep hill to climb, but it's about time we get about the business of climbing it again, because people in Virginia, where they lived under a balanced budget requirement in the state legislature, and Mark and Rob and Ben and others have done a great job every year of making sure that ends meet and do so without placing undue burdens on our citizens, the same thing can and must be done in Washington, D.C. And that, I think, is the key to the long-term success of our country, reining in the federal government. And when you rein in spending by requiring that budgets be balanced, you're also reining in the power of that bureaucracy that has fewer resources. One of the things about the stimulus that the President and uh, Democratic Congress pushed through was that it gave every federal government agency more resources to send out more regulators. And you see them all over this congressional district, regulating farmers in the Shenandoah Valley, regulating banks all across the district. You have more regulators doing more things to slow down this economy, and that is what is costing us jobs. And when you, when you turn back that spigot of money flowing into uh, various government bureaucracies, you create the pressure on the government to become more efficient. That's what free enterprise does. That's what Ford Motor Company did. That's what companies that survive economic downturns do all the time. They find ways to create a better product more efficiently, more effectively, because they have the incentive to do that. Government doesn't work that way, and that's why we need measures like a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution to restrain government in terms of its uncontrolled growth that we've seen in this country for many years now. That's what our agenda will be in Washington this fall and going into next year. And if we can't convince this president who said we don't need to amend the Constitution to do our jobs, a famous quote, when you consider that in the last 50 years the federal government has balanced its budget just four times, if we can't get this president to understand that, we need a new president. If we can't get this Senate to understand that, we need a new Senate, and we'll be working hard to accomplish all of this. But first, let's focus on this year. We have great races to run, important races here at the local level. Don't be misled by the idea that since we don't have a presidential race, or a Senate race, or a gubernatorial race on the ticket this year, that uh, these elections are not important. They are the foundation of our democracy, local government elections. And you can make a difference, because the turnout will be low, and whatever time you put in to making sure that your friends, your neighbors, your family members, the people who go to church with you, the people that you work with, if they get out and vote, and vote for these candidates, they will win this fall, and it will make a difference for each and every one of you. We want to help in this regard as well. I'll be campaigning with candidates all across this district, and we're going to also pull together volunteer Republicans from across the district, people who are interested in our cause, on October 15th in Verona uh, at the Government Center there at noon. Write it down, save the date. Our great Attorney General, Ken Cuccinelli, will be my special guest, and we're going to have a free barbecue and entertainment, and we want people from all across the district to come join us uh, and uh, then resolve during those last couple of weeks to get out the vote and win these elections this year, and then we'll turn to next year. We have a bright future ahead of us, but we're going to have to do the work to make it happen. This government is not going to do it for us. We know that. Let's roll up our sleeves, go out, and get the job done. Thank you so much. Mary Ellen and I look forward to seeing you on October 15th. We'll be sending you lots of messages about that uh, event, but save that date. We will see you then. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the United States of America.